We're coming up on MLK Day, and we'll be talking to an expert on diversity and inclusion on how close we're coming to Dr. King's dream. That's just ahead. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Crowley, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company, and we now have over 100 clients, and we branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team, and the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is The Jeff Crilly Show. MLK Day, as you know, is Monday, and I think if Dr. King were alive today, he would be proud of some things and, and he would shed a tear at others. Uh, certainly, we have chosen many ways to divide ourselves along political lines, along racial lines, along uh, uh, heritage and uh, religion, and uh, I think he would shed a tear at, at how we are treating each other, especially during a pandemic when the world should come together to fight this common enemy. To talk about that today, Francisco Gonzalez, he's an expert on diversity and inclusion. Thanks Hi, for Jeff. coming on the show. Thank you so much for having yeah. me. Well, I'm thrilled to have you here. Uh, tell us more about you before we get into some of the things that you're passionate about. All right. Um, so I am an immigrant. I was born in, uh, in a village north of Monterrey, Mexico, and uh, came to the States when I was five years old. Um, graduate of the University of North Texas, uh, degree in psychology, and uh, I work with special needs persons. Um, I'm also gay, so I kind of all over the place in terms of uh, diversity. I can check every box. <laughs> yes. um, and you're conservative, which... I am uh, a conservative, yes, I forgot that part. Yeah, so um, uh, one of the things I want to feature is uh, your business. So AYS, mm -hmm. uh, we've got some pictures. Tell us about AYS. So AYS is it's, it's similar to a home health agency. Um, our goal and our mission is to serve people with special needs uh, to function in the community versus an institution. Uh, in the 80s, 90s, the Supreme Court issued a ruling that states had a responsibility to create safety nets for people who could not help themselves. And so states had to respond to that by creating these safety nets. And that's it. really what we are, a response to that, so that people who do not have advocates or who do not have families, um, if, they're, if they find themselves in a cycle of into the hospital, stabilized, back out on the street, only to end up back in the hospital, they can um, be afforded a more... Um, normal life. Sure. And one of the things you're passionate about is education. Explain that. Correct. Um, I, I think that knowledge is power. I'm convinced of that. Um, and I, I believe that when it comes to um, persons with special needs, they have uh, historically been, um, I guess, exploited in some, in some regard. And so our goal and our mission is to empower these people with knowledge of their rights and responsibilities so that wherever they may go, they can always say, I don't think I have to do that, or I don't think I have to believe you. Um, and so that's what it is, really. It's, it's providing them with the tools and the knowledge to be able to, uh, dare I say, defend themselves in whatever they yes. encounter in life. I'd like your reaction to this. When the pandemic first hit, I remember having this thought, well, maybe God is putting us all on timeout. You know, you're, you're, you're bickering about silly stuff, so let's just have a pandemic where you have a, uh, a one common en enemy for the whole globe to fight. <laughs> and, and here we are a year and a half later, uh, almost two years later, and it seems like we're still fighting. Yeah. Well, I, I would first start off by saying that I don't think it was a timeout. Okay. I think that we were all chosen to live this experience. I think that each generation is given the people that are needed to propel that generation into the next phase of human development or human evolution. Uh, and so I don't think that we were necessarily in a timeout. We were just at a point where humanity was supposed to be. Now, uh, it is human nature, I think, to uh, to disagree with each other, right? Because we don't have the same views, Jeff. You and I, we come from very different backgrounds. We sure. just saw your history. You have yeah. been on TV all your life. I, on the other hand, have not. I've been, um, you know, uh, by people spit, you know, and right. uh, feeding them and whatnot. So we've been, our experiences are completely different. Does that mean that you're a bad person? No. Does that mean that I'm an excellent person? No, it doesn't. It just means that we're different. That's yes. it. And so I think that when you 
uh, look at the pandemic two years into it. Uh, yeah, the big green is happening, but I don't think it's anything new. I mean, when I, when I look at, especially as we're coming up on MLK, and I look at some of the history, when you look at, for example, Supreme Court rulings and whatnot, you find that as far back as the 80s, 90s, the conversation was still going, and it's still going. The problem here is politics. Mm. The problem here is politicians who are grabbing power Yes. At whatever cost. And I think the media, unfortunately, is playing into it for ratings. You know, um, CNN and MSNBC are rewarded, rewarded by the ratings to, to cater to a, a certain uh, demographic. And Fox is doing the same thing. Okay. And, and now uh, it feels like the media is just playing up on our differences. And, and nobody is really listening. Everybody's talking. Correct. And I think um, uh, that when it comes to issues like that, you have, um, for example, I think it was Justice Scalia um, who once uh, said that, um, you know, when it comes to how he was vilified on the court because of his uh, rulings, um, he always said that it was sort of the, the, the citizen's responsibility to do more than just listen to what the news is telling you. Read my opinion. If you disagree with it, fantastic. If I, if I convinced you to agree with me, fantastic. But either way, go back and look. And he said, I don't necessarily blame them too much because they have to do what they have to do. That's their business. It's clickbait, right? So they have to say what they have to say. The headline has to be catchy enough for you to hit that, that button and read that article. Now, you are intellectually irresponsible if you read that and nothing else. Right? You have a responsibility as a citizen, if you want to be an informed citizen, uh, to, to, to look further than what is simply presented yes. for both sides. I love your social media, and we're uh, going to roll a clip because you did a uh, uh, gratitude challenge, if you will. Uh, I think you started on Thanksgiving Day. Is that right? Or close to it? Close to it, yes. Close to it. Leading okay. up to it. Let's go ahead and roll this clip. What's popping, y'all? It's your boy Frankie, and this is day eight of the 30 Days of Thanksgiving Challenge. Today, I'm very grateful for the countless persons who have walked the path of sobriety before me and who were wise enough to live, leave it well lit and well marked for people like me to be able to follow in their footsteps. I'm grateful for that because today I get to live a new life, a free life, thanks to their experience. That was so refreshing to watch that because I went through several of your uh, uh, musings in the morning when you were talking to your viewers. Uh, what inspired you to do that? Well, another thing that I forgot yeah. to disclose is that I'm a recovering alcoholic. <laughs> so I think it is my, my recovering of hope. Right At one point as an alcoholic, I had lost it. And the fact that I went to such a dark place and was able to come back, then I was free to see life uh, from a new perspective. And so uh, the gratitude challenge that is posted is, um, is my public acknowledgement of that. But what moved me to do that is the fact that I have to remind myself every morning to be grateful that yesterday I didn't have a drink or that yesterday I had a difficulty that forced me outside of my comfort zone. That is what really inspires me and moves me to, um, to be grateful, um, to look at what life has thrown at me and instead of looking or thinking, why me, uh, really stand in front of it and ask, why not me? Yes. Or if not me, who else? Well, the world needs more people like you uh, posting positive stuff because I found on social media, some people are saying stuff that they may or may not even believe for the likes and the clicks and the shares. And, and unfortunately, you probably get more likes and shares when you say something negative than if you say something <laughs> positive. <laughs> um, uh, you know, as we come up on MLK Day, uh, it would be nice if we kind of centered and said, okay, uh, do I have to post that mean tweet? Correct. Yeah. Correct. And I think that it's very important to draw, you know, when you look at the mental health issues that our nation and the world is phasing. A lot of it, I think, has to do with the fact that so many people present a false um, idea of who they are. Um, but if we're real, if we can sit down and be honest, like, yeah, you saw me there on a skateboard having, or a one wheel, having fun. 
But that's not entirely who I am. To get to the point where I could ride that skateboard and have fun with it, I had to go to a very dark place. Mm. And you don't see that on there because when I was in a dark place, I didn't want to have my phone around me. I didn't want a camera around me. I didn't. So I think that that's what's so important that to acknowledge that social media has not made us lose, give up, or sacrifice our human nature. And our human nature is to make mistakes wow. and get back up. Well, we are so proud of you. You, uh, you gave you. us a chance to help promote you uh, to the media about Thank a month you. ago. We're going to show your media page because uh, I've been very impressed with all the variety of interviews you've been doing. In fact, one uh, really caught my attention, the one about uh, political uh, divisiveness on college campuses. Uh, what did you share with the public that day? Well, I think that what we're seeing in our college campuses is this sort of push to one side. There is no... Um, permission, if you will, um, by colleges and even by society as a whole for the student to become a critical thinker, thinker of his or her own accord. It is instead, this is what you are supposed to believe, this is how you're supposed to view the world, when in fact, um, the beauty of humanity is that not a single one of us sees the world the same way. I have seven brothers and sisters and not one of them sees the world the way that I do. And I wouldn't want them to. Yes. I wouldn't want them to because their differences enrich my life. And it's the same across the board. And isn't college where you're really supposed to double down on hearing other viewpoints? And I'm trying to remember what the study found that uh, conservative students would not have a friend who's liberal. Is well, actually, the study suggested or found that uh, uh, liberal students would not have uh, would not date a conservative student by and large i think it was 67 percent 30 percent would not be friends with a conservative person wow um and i as a conservative gay man mm -hmm. uh, catholic man and immigrant i find myself finding or, or being the one who's is rejected or denied the friendship because of my views but i think i go back to where i started and i say instead of saying i will not agree with you because i think you're racist well well, I'm an immigrant. I mean, right. start there. Um, what led me to believe that conservatism is the way forward as opposed to your worldview, right? If you close yourself to what's out there, in the long run, you're doing yourself a disservice. Yeah. Well, I'm hopeful. I mean, I think back on some of the protests during the 60s. Sometimes you have to, things have to come to a head in order for things to, to get better. I mean, are you hopeful as well? Yes. I'm, I'm very hopeful that in time we will learn to accept one another without regard to the color of our skin, the nature of our beliefs, our history, where we came from. I, and, it, and it's very interesting that we're still having this discussion now. Right. Right. It's the same thing. I don't care what the color of your skin is, I care what the content of your character is. Yes. And that's where it should all start. That's a beautiful way to end this segment. We're going to end with your website, which is franciscogonzalez.net. Uh, thank you so much for blessing us with your wisdom and, and uh, positive affirmations on this uh, eve of MLK Day. Jeff, thank you for having me. You bet. And that's it for now. We'll see you next time.